Hello everyone, welcome to Saw Dialogues 2022, presented by Art and Market in partnership with National Arts Council Singapore. My name is Nadia Wang and I'm editor at Art and Market. I'm here today to introduce you to the talk titled Collaborative Exhibition Making, co-presented with Esplanade Theatres on the Bay. The panel discussion is a reflection on collaborative models of production and how they have impacted artistic and curatorial practice, especially in the context of Singapore and Southeast Asia. The moderator for today is Lu Xiaohui, programmer in the visual arts team at the Esplanade. Xiaohui, over to you. So thank you, Nadia, um, for introducing me. Um, today in this conversation, we're going to be hearing and talking a lot more with art collectives and independent artist-run spaces to find out how they've approached collaboration, um, how they have adopted collaborative approaches to exhibition making, curatorial work, and also in terms of developing activities and programs with the different individuals and partners or communities that they work with. So please allow me the pleasure of introducing the speakers on today's panel. Um, I have um, with me from Sasa Art Projects in Phnom Penh, Cambodia, Chan Chum Vyasna, who is its manager, and also Korn Lina, who is their public program coordinator. Thank you so much. And also here, just right next to me, um, is Alphonse Chu, who is curator and co-founder of Moving Picture Experiment Group and Ong Kian Ping, who is um, curator and organizer of Supernormal Space. So I'm really looking forward to having this conversation with all of you um, to hear more about the visions of your respective entities, also the programs that you've been running, and also all your experiences you know, with working with your different collaborators over the years. So also to provide a bit more context as well for why we're having this conversation. So in 2022, Esplanade's visual arts programming is embarking on collaborations with artist collectives and artist run spaces to co-curate exhibitions around our center. And these um, projects are premised on exchanges and dialogues with the artists and also with the curators here. And um, it's something that we value and something that we see that's very important. And so we've approached Sasa Art Projects, Supernormal Space and Moving Picture Experiment Group because of the important work that they do um, in terms of supporting experimental practices and also with the communities and collaborators that they work with. And we feel that as, as a centre, it's important to support a diversity of practices and perspectives. So without further ado, you know, I'm going to speak a little less and I'm going to pass this time on to Vyasna and Lina to take us through to hear more about the work, you know, the amazing work that Sasa Art Projects is doing. So on to Vyasna and Lina, please. Yes, thank you everyone. Sasa Art Project is a Cambodian artist run space dedicated to artists and experimentals and art projects. And it's found by a Cambodian artist collective uh, six people after uh, in 2007. Next slide, please. <laughs> yes, uh, they both is uh, formed in 2007 uh, uh, from the art class, a photo photography class together. And they run an art gallery called Soso Art Gallery in 2007. This next. Yes, and currently is the Soso Art Project's uh, co-founder, only three people, and the operation team, four more people on the rise. Next. And this is the art gallery that they have been found in 2009, and under, inside the uh, restaurant called Bai Tong Restaurant. Next, please. They uh, focus on an art exhibition and art event. Uh, they run until uh, 18 months and they produce the around, uh, they work, have been work around 20 artists. Please next. Yes, and they produce uh, 11 show during that uh, time. And after that, they realize uh, that beyond an art exhibition, they also interested with, uh, uh, we are also interested with uh, 
artists in residency, art education, and more focus in an art community. So please, next slide. Next. So, uh, and uh, they're looking for the space that have a, a good community. So uh, uh, we find out the white building is the, uh, is the, is the apartment building in 1960. And uh, around that area have uh, during a Basa lands uh, in Basa area that have a culture hub is a national museum, Royal Palace, uh, Asaram Red Theater. And so uh, after my rule, Vai Building uh, is the, the place that 10% uh, per of the survival from the Khmer rule move and live and do art experiment there. So, so, so art project decide to move that space to connect it to the history. So uh, we, they run an art school and art exhibition, collaboration and uh, workshop, etc. And the, uh, the funding is uh, come by the self-funding and donation for the, for the first time. And after the white building have been knocked down, so we get another funding from support from Rai Foundation. And please next. So uh, we do an exper uh, experimental artist in residency program called BISAUT. And uh, we invite local and international artists to participate for the artist in residency that run for six weeks to eight weeks. And the artists uh, have a chance to do some research and uh, sharing session with the community, doing workshop and uh, uh, not uh, we not pressure the artist to do an artwork. So only uh, art sharing. That is uh, two of them. This one is a, a former student from the contemporary art class and they do an artist in residency with us in 2015. Next please. And also is an artist from Korea and Americans, uh, uh, Su Jin Chang, also doing artist in residency at our current place. Yes, please, next. And here is the pandemic during pandemic in 2021 uh, and our former student and also right now she is an artist and also architects and she do a residency with us during the pandemic as well. And uh, yes. And normal uh, art, uh, I've, I would like to introduce an art exhibition. So we uh, normally do four exhibitions per year that invite uh, three local artists and one uh, regional artist that we used to work with. Uh, this is an artist from uh, 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 Cambodia uh, uh, that they explore with a performance photography and uh, uh, relating to the environment uh, impact. So, uh, and next, and other artists from Baden Bong, uh, Kung Lab, that she focus on the environment, uh, environmental and plastic use waste uh, around uh, her community and around the city as well. And she created a beautiful painting. And also another artist from uh, Thailand, regionally right now she doing residency in Germany. And she also was in residency with us uh, at the White Building. So we invite her to come and uh, to do a art exhibition with us. But during that time, she could not allow for uh, traveling. So we do a uh, uh, very challenge to bring an artwork discussing mostly on Skype and Zoom. Yes, and other uh, latest uh, solo. solo exhibition by Pradalin, uh, she, uh, uh, she an architect and our former student as well. And she interested with uh, the material and how the uh, material use in, in, her, uh, in the construction uh, uh, size, so she produce it more in different form formats and play around with the uh, the material. 
yeah and the art class that lina will introduce and yeah so let me uh, share with you all mm-hmm. about uh, social art project art class and workshop so uh, art class and workshop have been a a uh, one important uh, project and uh, program for social art project uh, as uh, Bong Sna mentioned that it is a uh, important that uh, social art projects uh, find the alternative art practice uh, through uh, the art education and workshop. Uh, here at the by building we do a workshop every Sunday for the local resident uh, that was at the by building before the lockdown and uh, those children uh, uh, are enjoyable study with us, whether it is a, a joyful or a education, um, as well as the artist in residency also provide a workshop or uh, architecture tour during their residency as well. Uh, this is also part of the workshop that we uh, introduced to the local uh, youth at the White Building, where uh, we have a photo and video uh, workshop uh, to create the documentary uh, film. In this workshop, uh, I also one of the group to become a vibrant collective where we do uh, one uh, photography, which is we go interview people along the street, uh, how people are living, how they've been, and another is the creating the documentary uh, film, which is uh, stored on our archive website, the vibrant.org. Next, uh, winning the new space, we're trying to uh, find what are the alternatives that we could uh, provide for the Cambodian artists. So uh, in the new space, all the co-founders are uh, touched in the class. This is a contemporary art class uh, touched by Kwai Zunan. Next, please. Mm-hmm. And this is a contemporary and documentary photography touched by Lin Suk Lina that provide uh, skill uh, and thesis. Um, uh, this is uh, English for Artists touched by uh, Prom Sotong Aok uh, mm-hmm. with our co-founders uh, Woodley No. Uh, it is the, the class where the artists can uh, uh, write their own portfolio and uh, grant to uh, apply for grant and also the public speaking skill. So at the end of each uh, classes, we will ask uh, all the students to uh, produce new work. Uh, with is, uh, so they study uh, three months, one day, uh, one Sunday or Saturday every week for 12 weeks, and then uh, another month, four more, week, four more weeks to uh, create the work for the show. Uh, this is a uh, vibrating archive where, uh, like I mentioned in the classes, we ask the student or the uh, artist to, uh, no, uh, ask the student to do uh, photography or videography. Then later on, uh, this archive uh, uh, provide the education about not only the vibrating, but all the art that uh, artists have been produced at the vibrating. So, uh, alongside uh, with the photo archive from the family at the wedding, interview, how they've been, how is the city changing, but also using those uh, videos for a film festival or the festival uh, uh, that collaboration in our project. So you can uh, visit our wedding app for the audio, video, and photo uh, a kind of the building to learn more what is this community is. For uh, the last and not least uh, program that we do, the collaboration project, uh, these are uh, the special project that we invite all to do a collaboration with the other artists, collaborators, uh, researchers, uh, curators to create a program or an app project that can be accessible for everyday Cambodian. Uh, in this, uh, we have uh, artists doing a sounding room, the vibrating, inviting uh, uh, 
um, musician, local uh, uh, vocalist, etc., to uh, join and do this uh, experiment talk together uh, inside our art space. Another project is, uh, for example, uh, Open Studio, the collab, uh, collaboration. Uh, this is uh, where we do an exchange program with the uh, uh, Chiang Mai University uh, 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 multidisciplinary uh, department where uh, the student come to Cambodia, uh, stay in Cambodia and uh, do an experimental work with our uh, artists and then uh, our young artists, Cambodian artists, uh, went to Chiang Mai uh, University to uh, do the same thing. It's quite an interesting uh, 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 project uh, that uh, the young artists can experiment their idea and uh, share their uh, collaboration, winning their network. Uh, another one is a uh, uh, collaboration with uh, international uh, school, the University of New South Wales. Uh, it's a school of uh, the environment where, uh, in Sydney and with the collaboration of uh, New Khmer Architectures um, and it's also a project we create this uh, during this in pandemic online where the students uh, um, meet each other every week to discuss the idea. So uh, at the end of the project, winning the uh, two and a half months, uh, they have created two uh, different websites. One group were uh, talking about how uh, the deliver, how the food uh, deliver during the lockdown, how uh, people uh, exchange or create new uh, way to, to access to the food. And another group was how to uh, access uh, this uh, food for elderly that couldn't uh, go out which mean uh, during the lockdown, how the food can be uh, easily assessed for the, the senior, the uh, old people, amusing and joyful on uh, working a group together as the artists can find uh, what can, uh, for their first time to see uh, how this collaboration went, but they also uh, find out how can they improve their art knowledge, winning each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's all for us. Thank you. Thank you, Vyasna, Lina. Thank you so much for sharing. There is such a great diversity of programs that Sasa Art Projects has been running. Um, such, you know, great experiences as well. And I think one thing that really stri strikes me is how, you know, integrated it is, you know, with the communities that you all work with, how responsive it is, you know, to the context and needs of the communities. And I feel like there's so much to learn from there. Thank you so much. Um, so for now, I'm going to pass this time on to Kian Ping um, to share more on Supernormal Space. Kian Ping, on to you. Thank you. Supernormal came to be was because of my own personal experiences. Um, when I graduated in um, 2006, one, one year before Sasa. <laughs> so, at that time, I was um, a fresh grad who knows nothing about the arts market and how things kind of work. And I was really hungry and wanted to do stuff like, you know, be in shows, uh, be commissioned for art, make money from art. <laughs> but I realized, you know, none of that was um, possible without some kind of connections. Um, without some kind of self-promotion, which doesn't always, you know, happen with everybody, uh, and obviously not me. <laughs> so um, I, I thought at that time, oh, you know, it would be really nice if there was a space or platform or someone who could um, really be there to offer a bit of platform, help, guidance, or, or just, you know, sharing in general. Um, so, so that was always something that I believe um, have guided to what Supernormal is today. So this is um, an image of our new space. This is the third space uh, and this is at Moonstone Lane, which is a light industrial space. So sp spaces in Singapore is, is really tricky, right? <laughs> and you know, you, you have different time 
different rates and uh, you know it's, it's really a rare commodity so we have always been you know struggling with space or either the rent got too high or we grew out of the space because of you know our demands so this last space i think to me is quite perfect <laughs> in terms of uh, the space that we can use and location and all that so this is a recent event that we did in Supernormal. It's called Run the Code. And it's an event that, um, that invites creative coders and musicians to really come and celebrate this spirit of improvisation. And it was a, it was a one day event when, and everyone just came without any preparations of any sort. And we just kind of like jam you know, jamming with visuals, jamming with sound, music. Um, and I think that to me was really uh, kind of the spirit of what Supernorma tries to be, you know, getting people together to play and to work with art and technology and, and just playing with that. And I think to me that has always been something that I hope to achieve with Supernorma. And Again, going back to my own personal practice and experiences where I, <coughs> at that time, art and technology wasn't really like a thing yet. <laughs> and, and I often had people asking me if I, I am an engineer. <laughs> so today, of course, that, that has changed radically. And um, we, of course, we continue trying to push for the intersections between art and technology. But I think one of the core directions that Supernormal have is always to, um, to show that technology is more than just technology. It has very direct and real implications beyond the medium and the format. As part of that, we, we host and we have workshops um, <clears throat> that engages with the public or students or artists who are interested in technology. And with these creative technology workshops, uh, the thing that we are trying to do here is to educate them not just about the technology, but also what they can do, understanding what the nature of it is um, and not be so... Um, you know, <laughs> not be so alienated by the idea of technology. Because I think a lot of times um, people are scared of technology in a way that they think and believe that it's not for them. But in reality, they are so uh, immersed in technology that they don't even know. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of the reality that we live in. And um, we hope to sort of break that apart and get people to see and understand what all these little bits and pieces of technology can do um, and what they cannot do. Yeah. So this is a workshop that we did um, in 2019 as part of a larger show called Adaptations. So Processing is a creative coding platform that was designed for uh, artists and designers to get into coding without all that you know, complexities and making it easier, basically. Um, so we, we hosted Processing Day 2019. Um, it was a one-day event where we had uh, practical workshops. Uh, we had invited speakers like Debbie Ding to talk about their practice and how they engage um, with technology in their works. Um, we had different thematic workshops as well. And the image that you see here is a basic coding workshop that was uh, led by myself. And basically, in, in, in the workshop, I'm quite hands-on. I, I, I am involved from curating to setting up to moving things to designing stuff and teaching, of course. And I, I think one of the things that Supernormal also tries to do is to really promote and to engage with young artists who is also interested in working with digital media or technology. And one of the um, 
shows that we did recently is the live creative show. Um, and this was a good example of that because we actually commissioned them uh, to do the early iteration of live creative show back in 2020 um, for an exhibition called the Open Workshop. And it was, a, it was an event or a show that really looks at this open process of uh, making art and how it can evolve over time and that art is not something that is static. So with them, they wanted to explore this idea of, um, hey, I'm missing some image. Um, a live reality TV show. <laughs> and how that can possibly be art, right? And so what they did with this show or this exhibition was to create a studio environment that is open uh, and anyone could come in and, and see the process. So they basically have this studio and they have a group of artists working there, chilling out, having fun. It's kind of like open studios in residency programs, but without the fixed visit time. So that you can go there like throughout the whole entire period. And of course there are TVs and cameras like hidden around. <laughs> so it's quite interesting to see how, how that works out. Um, it, and they also have like confession time where they really talk about this new reality that they, they are kind of um, facing in this environment. So, so that was in 2020 and they took some time to refine the work and uh, in 2021 recently we had a second show which was a full-on screening of that process and some additional works based on that. Um, and, and the images are not here so I, I can't show you that. Yeah, so earlier I was talking about um, the emphasis of talking or having conversations around technology and that technology is not just confined to VR, AR, and, and some of the terms that we are more used to, but that technology is, is basically how society operates on, which involves like social media, which involves like very fundamental technologies. So uh, early this year, we curated and organized a show called Network Bodies, which uh, <coughs> really examines the idea of how intimacy can be achieved or cannot be achieved through technology. And it came at an important time because, you know, we are, we are facing this whole rara of <laughs> the, the pandemic and how a lot of us are suffering, um, at least in the earlier periods of COVID, when we were all so new to this whole idea of not being able to move, to be immobile, to, to not be able to touch or be separated physically from our loved ones. So this, this show came about uh, from there. And we wanted to look at how the, our bodies can be connected via different ways. And the show was exactly about that. So um, <clears throat> we, we worked with, I think about four, 11 artists, both international and local. And it was interesting because we had very different working process uh, with the local artists and the international artists for, for obvious reasons, you know, because we couldn't physically, uh, they couldn't physically be here, right? So a lot of online communication was done with the foreign artists and with the local artists, we worked really closely with them. So for example, like uh, with Sarah Chu's work, Zoom Click Watts, um, we actually worked really closely with her by, and through a series of conversations, uh, visits, and discussions about how we can present this work. And the, the final format was, um, I would say, a kind of collaboration between the space and herself. So we did things like visualizing how this work might look like. Because, um, you know, she wasn't really sure. I, I think it was because this is the first time breaking out of a flat 2D format and, and sort of adopting a more three-dimensional sculptural form. And so what I did was to create like a Unity 3D version of this where she can navigate through the space and get a sense of how this might look like. 
And um, then we have Paul Sermon, who is a really important artist in, uh, in the world of telematics, uh, which basically means connecting with people via vast distances um, through video conferencing. Right? So with his work, he was very interested in how intimacy could be uh, evoked through his work, um, where we basically have a projection or someone else live over his physical self. So there was a kind of a really um, uncanny uh, intimacy that's evoked when these two bodies, digital and physical, are overlaid amongst each other. So it was quite interesting to see how that um, changed over time, where we had different performers. Uh, sometimes we even have you know, participants or, or audiences straying into the bay, <laughs> like really trying inv to <laughs> invade the space uh, and, and playing with this other person just to see if they're like real or live. Um, and, and it's always hilarious when we see, or at points that were really poignant or like really emotional moments. And, and we have also Alicia Neal, whose work Care Index looks at um, this very difficult time through the eyes of uh, caregivers, people who actually have to spend a significant amount of the time looking after someone else. And it becomes even harder in this pandemic period because of the inconvenience, you know, that, that now, where, now, where they now have to spend even more time taking care of them because of the limitation of mobility of themselves and other people who might have been helping in the past. So this is the show that um, happened in Supernorma. Again, going back to this show. Yeah. So our new space is a lot m bigger and, and it also offers more flexibility. Yeah, so in, in this version, they had physical sculptures and the use of uh, different media as well. Yeah, also another screenshot of the space. Yeah, so the last um, thing I want to talk about is collaboration. So I think so far, Supernormal has been quite... Um, I wouldn't say insular, but we, we have been just mostly focused on doing our own stuff. And our, the goal for f the next two years is to try and engage with more collaborations, both local and international collaborations. And one of the things that we are currently working on uh, with Michael Lee is workshopables. And workshopables is, a, is an experimental um, approach towards workshopping and we are looking at workshops that is not normally taught in schools or something that might be quite useless in a sense like it doesn't achieve anything on its own <laughs> but we have a format where we have artists teaching a workshop and also attending other workshops by the other artists so every, everyone would have attended at least 80% of all the other workshops. So this is kind of operating like a boot camp format where we have a two, two weeks intensive workshopping period and they'll be learning and immersing themselves in all kinds of perhaps useful, perhaps useless uh, workshops. Um, but they are supposed to find inspirations or learn something from these workshops that will inform their final work. So all these workshops will culminate into a final work, which will be shown uh, and around March. Yep. Yeah, so it's quite interesting for me to see how this uh, evolves. And with this, uh, with this workshop, we are also looking at different formats and how this can possibly work. Um, so this is a workshop by uh, Wei Xin Chong, 
yeah, Sing Chong. You might know her as Sing Chong or Wei Sing Chong. And it's basically about ASMR, a very particular effect of that, which is called steaming. So in this workshop, everyone was like on Zoom and like with their headphones and really trying to, you know, like experience this kind of effect that uh, she was talking about. And using that as a way to explore the act of healing and looking at uh, ASMR beyond, beyond the tingling, beyond the physical effect and looking at how this can go beyond that in, in a very um, impactful manner for those who have, you know, traumas from different, for, for different reasons. Yeah, and, and I think that's, that's it for me, um, Supernormal. And, and Supernormal is basically, um, we are, we're basically currently looking at how we can take this idea of collaboration further. And we're currently working with also a Korean group, uh, also revolving around workshops and the format of receiving and sending and thinking about how that can change or influence the way that we think between spaces. It's a collaboration between different art spaces. Yeah. Um, we, we recently also had a, an online collaboration with um, Be Fantastic, which is an Indian-based media festival. And the collaboration came about uh, as a fellowship where different artists, researchers, students came together uh, looking at the topic of artificial intelligence and climate change and thinking about how we can put these two things together over a period of two months um, to create interesting or impactful uh, works that question this inter intersection between technology and climate change. Uh, it sounds quite polar in nature, but, but that, that is the very, I think that, that is quite fundamental to the existence of humans <laughs> in general. Uh, we are quite extreme beings, yeah. So, so that's all for Supernormal. Thank you very much. All right, thank you so much, Kimping, for sharing. I think um, it's very interesting to hear, you know, the work that, you know, you and Supernormal Space are doing in terms of pushing that sort of engagement with technology and also looking forward to all the collaborations that are coming up. So I'm going to pass this time on to Alphonse to share more about Moving Picture Experiment Group and what you have been doing. So yes, um, thank you so much um, to Sherry for being here to, to camping and of course to the very lovely people of Soso. Um, Moving Picture Experiments Group is a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot younger um, than all of the other collectives. So we were actually only founded in 2020. So who knows, maybe I would talk a lot less or maybe I would just end up um, murmuring a lot more things. But yes, um, the Moving Picture Experiments Group, or MPEG for short, as you can see, um, it's, it's a pun. It's a pun and it's a way of, 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 of working that, that um, my co-founders and myself, uh, my co-founders being Dave Lim and Ada Ng, who are both artists, filmmakers, and currently entrepreneurs, um, have kind of stumbled into a way of working that is also very much rooted um, in the personal engagement and interest in the idea of um, the moving image. So um, at the roots, MPEG originally stands for Moving Pictures Experts Group, which um, um, is kind of this working group that was convened by ISO, which is the International Standards Organization, the person who makes sure, or rather the entity that makes sure that we comply to certain safety standards in um, production, manufacturing, and whatever you can think of that involves the use of um, standards, which is really, 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 really broad. And um, for now, um, MPEG actually also, of course, takes the form of file format of audiovisual transmissions in the context of digital technology. And for us, um, this is something that, um, that, that stood out to us when we were coming together to converse and discuss, you know, what is the nature of this thing that we want to put together. And um, we had a long discussion really about, 
you know, our mutual interests, our practices, and the different ways that intersect. Because I think that we all recognize, for example, how if we want to look at it from the perspective of narrativity, um, the audiovisual, you have cinema, you have television, you have, you know, um, different ways of manifesting performance, and now you have screen dance, dance films, etc. Um, but you see that um, they all kind of use or rather depart from the moving image and, 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 and create a whole new vernacular around it. And of course, if we want to go on the parallel um, technological trajectory from way back in the 50s and 60s onwards, we can of course um, understand the um, development of television technology as opposed to cinematic technology from projections to actual digital signals um, of, of videos and, and, and audios that are being transmitted. So for us, you know, we really, really wanted to dig into the theme of what it means to be audiovisual in the current context. And for us to go back into the very format of it, um, even just as a moniker to, to, to convene something together, was really important in also acknowledging that audiovisuality is an expanded frame of reference and possibility in the current co technological context. And so um, the three of us decided to come together and, 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 and talk about what it is to, to make and to contemplate making and to contemplate everything else that accompany making. So as you can see from here, we um, on the picture, we're all wearing our individual uniforms, none of which um, we can wear today because um, it's a shoot and I've been giving strict instruction as to what looks good on screen. This is why I look slightly indecent. Um, but um, bearing from that, I think it is very important to also then acknowledge the kind of different positionalities that, 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 that we kind of embody and work with throughout our process of setting up um, an, the, the entity known as MPEG. Um, because for example, um, with Dave's own practice, um, he works a lot um, across photography and, and filmmaking and, and documentary making. And for example, his own practice revolves around um, a lot of um, explorations of the urban conditions. Um, in a way, his practice and his works um, uh, manifest in forms that almost resemble urban studies of specific conditions of urbanity and of course how humans um, exist within that context, um, in the words of um, Hakian Sarkeesian in for this year, last year, whichever years, um, Venice Architecture Biennale, um, how we live together. And um, for Ada on, on the right, um, her work um, in her installations and, and, and her videos and her portraits revolve um, very much um, in the realms of the affect of a certain kind of subjectivity, embodies a subjectivity um, that presumes and presupposes such a, certain um, affectations, emotions, and moods. So, for example, already here we can see kind of two different layers. One maybe more anthropological, and the other maybe more um, not personal but um, intimate um, in in, the, in that realm. And then there's of course me. So my own practice is I started in the very beginning as a film critic, as, as, as a writer. I work extensively um, with words. I'm a text worker, so that's a pun on the oldest job that exists in humanity. And um, the way that I approach the idea of media and, and, and of course the moving image then takes on an additional dimension in terms of how then media is additionally represented within the context um, of a media apparatus and a media ecosystem media ecology, so as to speak. So now I'm also making more works as, as a filmmaker, as an essayist, and I work um, between text, um, the moving image, and, and spaces um, in the realm of architecture. But I think that, you know, um, embodying these different pos positionalities is really, really important then to kind of allow us the ongoing conversations and discussions needed to continually think about the possibilities and implications of the moving image as it migrate from screen to screen, from platform to platform, from systems to networks to different, um, even ideological manifestations. And it is on this note that I also thought it is particularly interesting to acknowledge the fact that NPEC doesn't have a space. We can't afford rent amongst other things um, in, in, in Singapore, as, as Kim Feng has, as has mentioned um, briefly in, in, in his introduction as well. So we occur on the spectrum that is entirely different, ontologically speaking, from the kind of collectivization and 
putting things together that could occur on that say um, with that say salsa art projects or so and you know the entire I wouldn't use the word franchise but that entire rhizome um, methods of rhizomatic methods of organizing and, and, and putting things together all for example like Kim Feng where a lot of the activities um, are rooted into supernormals physical presence as a spatial entity. For us, we are dislocated from the idea of physicality. So instead of occurring a kind of geographical or geophysical um, kind of realm of existence, I think that we are all coming to terms with the fact that we are in a way much more a discursive construct. We are delocalized and thus we can um, occupy multiple positions at the same time and we can be present in multiple places at the same time, even though here and there we do utilize the notion of a physical space to, um, as a method of convening and, 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 and other things that we want to do from a more programmatic um, point of view. Is this working? No, no, it's not working. Um, I need manual clicking from the screen. Oh yes, thanks. So from experts to experiments, I think that the way that we work, given that there's of course a certain degree of informality that comes with not having, um, I would say a certain kind of institutional memory and presence, um, no matter how um, dispersive or, 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 or how tena um, tenacious. Um, when you have a space, you have an identity for better or for worse. And this is, I think, um, a problem that a lot of artistic organization um, that had its roots um, rooted in a specific spatial context space. So in contemporary Singapore, um, of course, we have the substation, we have Centre 42. So um, places that are rooted to a specific architecture. So the moment there is a kind of displacement process that exists, you realise that poop, hits the fan or the wall or the ceiling, whichever um, depends on your linguistic preference on all of that turn of phrases. So for us, we don't have spaces and so, and so we can feel free to be as tentacular as we want. We can spread our tentacles and our ways of seeing our sensory, um, sensory apparatuses, whichever way we want. And I think that, um, as I also mentioned earlier on, um, even in our names, to go um, to riff from moving pictures experts group to moving um, picture experiments um, group. There is, of course, um, a certain tongue-in-cheek nature of what we're doing, and I think that that is something that is part and parcel of kind of digital media culture that has emerged since um, um, the early 2000s, where parodying, transmissions, corruptions, the queering of discourses and methodologies, yes, and so from then on, um, for, it is very important to think of things in, from a very programmatic point of view. Um, I hesitate to use the word curatorial in this instance because as we all know, curatorial, um, the idea of a curator has a very museological um, 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 kind of ontology, or sorry, etymology, and where it came about. So curate, the curator um, from way back into etymology, I don't know whether it's Greek, Latin, whatever, um, begins with the idea of caring for artifacts in, in a museum. So of course, a museum also has its own um, roots way back in, 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 in ancient Greece with the museon um, and, and other spatial entities. And so for us, you know, if you don't have a collection to work with, in a way, can you really curate beyond you know, departing the expanded definitions of curation and, and, and curating, um, which um, I think is pretty much encapsulated by the current era where everyone is a curator. I recently was at the library and there is an entire book titled The, Curate, um, the Curatorial Economy or The Curating Economy, where basically curating just become another buzzword for putting things together in a specific ways for people to buy stuff, which um, as we know, um, is a capitalist interjection on a very, very old process that predates so many of the ideological formations that we exist in. So um, for us, we really, um, by breaking beyond the, the, the terminologies and I think the baggages associated with the idea of a curatorial process into that say programmatic or, or, or the ideas of convening, I think that is when we can bring together different discourses, but also beyond the discourses, the communities within which the discourses are embedded and the communities within which, uh, or, or rather the discourses 
exclude because I think the metapolitics of exclusion, inclusion, who gets to do this, who gets to present, who gets to produce, that is itself part and parcel of the contemporary um, context and, 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 and conventions which we want to pick at the interstice of it a little bit because if not, it becomes very didactic sometimes um, when we see on occasion certain um, types of group show that um, occurs at a monolithic or, or at a very this um, very apparent attempt at trying to queer a discourse from a monolithic institutional position, which just ends up turning a show into a glossary or a thesaurus. And for us, um, that is something that we want to avoid, mainly because of the fact that um, it's a pragmatic concern. We don't have the budgets to do yet another survey show of an important media artist originally from East Asia, who found his roots in Germany. And I'm definitely not talking about the Namjoon Pike show at the National Gallery right now, um, which came from the Barbican. And so um, not having certain material conditions allow for certain ways of making or versus certain ways of making. So for example, right here, and I realize that all the pictures that I've um, attached this um, do not include captions unlike everyone else. So I have to really explain uh, what's going on in each of the pictures. So for example, in this picture, um, it's actually um, um, a special presentation by the artist um, Ho Tzu Nian on the occasion um, of our first major project on off screen, which is commissioned by the National Arts Council for Singapore for Art Week 2021. Years are weird now, plague times. And so, um, for example, in this particular presentation, um, Tu was um, really talking about the idea or the manifestations of the concept of, of a screen in his practices. So um, Tu Nian is a very, very interesting case study um, of, of someone who adopts this querying of the boundaries that, that we are exploring, even though, of course, he, um, he isn't part of the, of the group show, because he has made works for cinema that, for example, has traveled to very important film festivals such as the Quinzon de Réalisateur um, with the Cannes Film Festival in the, um, in the early 2000s. And he also made um, expanded performance works, for example, um, with the Light Tech series for the Singapore International Festival of Art. And of course, we all know him for his very interesting um, new media moving image expanded take um, of, of, of discussing, for example, with um, his Tiger series, which has went to um, a couple of very interesting places, including, of course, um, House de Couture developed and amongst other places. So um, in a way, having him here is um, a way for us to also explore that ethos of, of making from an expanded frame. And so um, then digging then into the, the, the very nature of things, we reconsider the moving image. We want to um, ask what is movement, what is moving and what is the image? And of course, what are the milieu of it and their developments? Because the idea um, is very much embedded in the way we work that there is always a plurality and there's always a polyphony as to how things can manifest, particularly in visual culture. Um, this entire presentation for our lovely audience who will be seeing this in around three to four weeks time, we know that they are watching a work of moving image, even though it is supposed to be a, um, the imitation of a sort of live seamal cast situation. Um, but no, everyone you know that I'm staring at through the camera is looking at probably 24 frames per second. So it's an illusion of the liveness that we embody. And so that is the kind of interesting things that we pick apart because depending on the kind of situational context in which you watch this very video that you are watching right now, you don't know whether you can call this a video installation, a work of expanded cinema. If you play this in an auditorium, you know it could just be a really, really weird film. Or if you do this multiple channel thing, it could even be um, a part of a performance piece, the way that, for example, Xiaohui has been dramaturging our responses through the way that she moderates. So for so I think this kind of creates the expansive with an A notion of, of, of course existing and, and being represented and, and mediation. And so um, we enjoy talking a lot um, as everyone can probably tell, I'm talking a lot right now. And I think that having conversations and having discussions and to kind of have the additional engagement um, that follows exhibition making is so important because of the fact that um, the exhibition, of course, although it had its roots in certain didactic methods, is also very much a way, um, the creation of kind of temporal 
And normally, when certain forms of conviviality can, can, in, can emerge and come to the fore. So for us, um, in a way, the tours um, that we conduct, for example, the talks, the tours, the screening programs that we conduct are part and parcel of exhibition making in the way that the exhibition can no longer be construed as that singular material entity that unfolds over a certain um, program set of time that I think that um, is associated with traditional um, exhibition making methods. And of course, from then on, um, it is also then important to acknowledge, you know, the makers of the moving image themselves. And I'm speaking of this from not just the position of, of artists and filmmakers, but also, of course, audiences, exhibitors and, and everyone else to come together in convening um, a discourse or the discourses that could exist. And so you can just see from here the different pictures and different wordplay that, that we discuss and try to embody throughout the course of our activity. And yes, and this is just a nice picture of us doing our artist um, studio visit where, you know, you can't tell from the picture on the top left that, you know, there is an active agent mediating a presence and a representation of it that happens at a later time. So um, the takeaway for us really um, for the Moving Picture Experiment group then is to kind of create the understanding that we exist within a context or we exist within context. And in what ways are the moving image complicit in per perpetuating certain ideologies, violences, but also the joys of gathering that we can all share together? And I can finally take a breath. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I don't know how to hold on to this. Yeah, you can hold on to it. <laughs> okay, thank you everyone for sharing. Um, I think it's been very interesting to hear from all of you. Um, thanks for really sharing generously about your programs, um, about how you you know, work closely with your collaborators. So I think I'm really just um, going to start off with, with some questions because some things come to mind. I um, was wondering if you all could share, like, maybe give an example for, for your respective entities you know, on how you all broach um, collaborating you know, on a particular project you know, with any of your collaborators. It could be you know, partners, organisations or artists. And then maybe if you could also, for those programs that have been running for a while, how has that engagement with your collaborators evolved over time? So um, anyone who wants to kind of start off um, by sharing a bit more about, so I think I just kind of reiterate, like how you broach this collaboration with your collaborators. And if it's been something that's been running for a while, you know, how has it evolved? Um, it could be any of the programs that you have talked about just now. And then we just want to hear, you know, how that process has been. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, I think um, I think for all all the projects that we do that involves any kind of collaborations, it always starts from talking, um, really, really casual talks, um, like kopitiam kind of talks, just talking about stuff in general that might or might not involve the actual thing that we're trying to organize. Um, and this is really to kind of synthesize kind of chemistry that needs to happen between collaborators and sort of get us on the same page. And to kind of find out what are the things that we are interested, what are our belief systems, and how that might potentially affect whatever we are trying to go about doing that. So it's kind of a, a way, kind of like a dance between partners, people, and thinking about how we can proceed from there, you know, like, you know, if, if I talk to someone, like maybe I'm talking to Sarah Chu and I realize that her interest lies very much in this unspoken intimacies between people or non-people, then I'm going to be more attuned to looking at things from that perspective. So I, I think it's a really important process or a beginning Kickstarter that really allows both parties, not, not, not just me alone, but both parties, to have an understanding of who we are and how we can move on from there. So, and, and I think for me, I work pretty much in an organic manner. So from that point onwards, um, I tend to adopt a <coughs> play by ear, almost like jazz, a free jazz uh, approach that might change every time. But the common, common ground uh, amongst all these projects is always 
opening conversation. Um, and not, 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 not just working with artists, but even like, you know, hiring interns, I always just talk to them first. <laughs> just to make sure that, you know, we, we, we kind of align to each other. Yeah, and we don't really have a long-term running project yet. Um, but I guess from the project that we are working on right now, uh, Workshopables with Michael Lee, um, it, it's really interesting to see how that has evolved over the period uh, where we first began talking to how um, it is now. And, and a lot of it came about through this process of hanging out with the participants, uh, learning about what they learned or unlearning what we have learned. And it's a really interesting process because that makes us think about um, what it means to work together. Uh, when you have a room full of, you know, really opinionated artists, <laughs> just coming together and talking, sharing, learning from each other. Yeah. So I, I guess the point here is that to, to, to really keep an open mind, eye and ear and just really learn and not just be very fixated about what your initial vision is. Yeah, so that's kind of the approach I have. Uh, for us, uh, we starting from friendship, networking, and in talking, sharing idea first. Uh, and normally we uh, and our starting with organic way and uh, and mostly we don't do uh, oftenly we just uh, planning because we have a lot of program per year so we do at least one or two collaboration program per year only and but uh, the person that we work with uh, not just random we need to be uh, know each other learn each other in long time and how to create uh, the impact okay. program mm. together and discuss it's a long-term friendship relationship and network not just like running up and 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 join the project together so this is how we work too and yeah it's mm. uh, also on uh, uh, what we think is uh, would be interesting uh, to show to share mm. that uh, we for some for some uh, example uh, like visualize history that we uh, the latest exhibition we do uh, mm. so we were thinking what can we learn from each other mm. but also um, the collaboration that uh, is it accessible or is it uh, really important uh, mm. to learn the process uh, to mm. share the knowledge uh, winning our art community uh, audience, public audience. So uh, the question is always, uh, is it interesting? Interesting, is it <laughs> <laughs> no, Is it uh, something that we should uh, exchange and, and, and learn from each other? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I don't, yeah, I we haven't had a long term thing. We we barely exist in the long term, long durée kind of perspective. So um, there is a lot of that that I can't really unpack yet. But um, I think that um, as you mentioned, and as everyone else's campaign and and, and 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 Lena and all mentioned, I think that you know working together, given that we're all we're all human, presumably, and we're all social animals. I think there is a certain degree of commonality in, of course, how any convening can occur. And I think that for us, we really, really want to then touch on the continuation of the idea of conviviality and, and, and respect. And I think that what is also very important for us, particularly, is also um, with, with Dave, Adrian, and myself, um, is also recognizing the different positionality that we embody. So um, I'm using it as a very reductive singular to, um, word, but I think that in terms of positionality, we're really looking at, for example, what are the kind of ideological values and positions that, for example, you, an artist takes and, and how do they position themselves within an extent landscape or landscapes. And of course, from then on, there are also other considerations, very human considerations, 
even within the kind of intrapolitics that occur within any scene, within, within any gathering of no more than five people, it already emerges. And I think that way of working is, um, is really contingent on a model of a shared sense of honesty and responsibility. I wouldn't say a kind of radical transparency because it is not functioning in the mode of an institutional critique because the Moving Picture Experiments group is just three people who have had too many late night conversations together and ate too many things together and then decide to apply for a grant which they then get and then now a lot of things are occurring from that original spontaneity. And I think that acknowledging that historical roots of how things come about and why certain things come about is very important in helping us avoid a certain sense of self-importance, warranted or not, that emerges, I would say, in a lot of cultural organization work because we don't work with actual capital. So a lot of how we function is with cultural and social capital and with that, it can occasionally create an illusion of a certain relevance that we are very cognizant of because we don't own a space, we don't own worldly things that we have to actively maintain a certain appearance of. And I think that is a very long-winded way of saying that, yeah, Lord, we sit around, we talk, we suss each other out, and then we decide whether there is an affinity to continue to dwell on. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for sharing. I think some things that come through, um, you know, that about respect, you know, about respecting one another, building that relationship and having, you know, that friendship, right, that, that communication, you know, with the people that you work with, how important that is. And I think, yeah, like Alphonse mentioned, we're all human, you know, we, we want that sort of human connection and to build that sort of understanding with one another. Um, I think Alphonse has mentioned quite a bit about space and place. And um, I know that for all your different uh, respective entities, you know, your relationship with space and place has um, been quite different. Maybe you all could share a bit more about, you know, how does this um, factor into the programs that you run, um, whether in terms of, you know, the work, you know, that you present or that you operate in. Yeah. Is it something that, you know, you're, um, it's always at the foremost of your mind? Um, how does that impact, you know, your, your programs? I'd like to hear from Sasa Art Projects and Supernormal Space. Yeah. Right, so I have this feeling that everyone's looking at me. <laughs> so I will, I will start. Um, I think I've always been really sensitive to space. And because of that, I, I am very particular in the space that I work with. And to me, it's always about a certain kind of conversation with space, um, which is of course so funny to say because that is precisely what we like here. <laughs> um, space, space is very connected to capital, right? And capital is what we don't have. So, but nonetheless, you know, I, I, I always begin with a conversation. I mean, with my, with my personal practice, um, I start with conversations with a space, just like being in a space. So whenever I start working with anything, uh, whether it's looking for a new space with Supernormal or with my own work, I always look at the space first. And with the current space at Supernormal in Moonstone Lane, <coughs> I spent about two, three months just looking at all these different spaces. And I was really particular, like the space needed to speak to me. Like I need to feel like I want to be in this space because it, it is more than just getting a physical space. It is a commitment, right? Commitment to the programs that will happen here, commitment to the, to the kaching, the, the money that you're going to pay for that space, a commitment to the kind of things, friendships, connections that might happen in this space. So it, it is more than just a space. It is a space that will contain all these really intimate and precious things. Um, so that has, yeah, so, so space is always something that 
is really, really important. And, and not just physical space, but you know, I, I'm also always concerned about other kinds of spaces, social space, oral space, um, and thinking about the kind of um, <laughs> things that might or might not happen, the kind of people that might exist or might not exist in certain spaces. So people have, for example, people have spoken or spoken to me that you know I should maybe get a space far out, um, like Jurong, you know, where it's much cheaper. But um, my response to that is that you know I, I think um, a space, or at least my my initial intentions of having a space, is to help give platform to a young artists. And if I'm going to put a space like way, way far where nobody will visit, unless your work is really interesting, <laughs> then it's more for me and not so much for them. So for me, that there, 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 there needs to be a balance between that. And I think this is country specific. Of course, that might not apply to Cambodia or other countries. But in Singapore, people are really particular about distance, even though it's so small. <laughs> like just having to travel like 15 minutes more is like, wow, so much work to them. Um, so it's a really strange dynamic that we have to navigate here. When we talk about space, place, and, and the translation or tra conversion from space to place, or vice versa. Yeah, so that, that's always something that um, I'm thinking about. I'm, I'm a big fan of space, yeah, basically. And I, I think the presence, um, and presence is a big thing to me, both in my works and other things. The, the idea of a presence in space is really important because that, that really changes the way that we exist and the work existing in the spaces and really changes the way that we experience something and the way that a message or meaning or emotions can be conveyed to a certain person. And that's super, super important in art making. Um, and, and even a simple thing like working in a different space can be so transformative when you work in a nice space. <laughs> as simple as that, yeah. And may, maybe Sasa has more to add to that. Uh, what kind of space that create, you create uh, the environment uh, for mm -hmm. people? But uh, Sasa Arctic, we tend to think about like, for example, uh, when we have a space inside the white building, uh, it's uh, referring to mostly uh, with the people, with the community. So uh, let's say uh, target audience is our, the, uh, our community, but also we wanted to learn from them. Uh, mm -hmm. Like we mentioned before, at the Bible, was uh, the group of uh, artists uh, who survived from Khmer Rouge. So they are musicians, uh, vocalists, Dancer. dancers, and things like that. So we wanted to learn on uh, or get engaged with them on uh, their art practice, but also us as a new comer or new artist to learn to uh, create something new there and what can uh, the, the next, next generation can do there. So the space is uh, uh, a meaning of uh, connecting people, but mm. uh, we also think a space as a well, space like uh, where uh, a platform uh, to, like you mentioned, uh, thinking on uh, where uh, it could be uh, interesting, but uh, to imagination, if mm. I, I use the right word, imag um, imagination of uh, what uh, in this uh, conceptual or contemporary art uh, could thinking of. Mm. But uh, also uh, when we think of uh, doing a festival, uh, it's very important um, that we select uh, a space. Uh, uh, mm. want to share about our yes. current, current festival. So, yes. So the space is also, uh, we work with the space every exhibition is moving, changing. So when we move to the current space, 
that uh, uh, have a two level. So we have an exhibition place and uh, artist residency upstairs. And uh, we focus with not the only uh, uh, space that who can hang. So we explore with, with different media. We like uh, sound, like video installation, object installation, and performance, and uh, uh, like uh, we do uh, dance music in the side of the space currently and focus with young audience and new audience. But when we do a festival, we uh, relating to architect uh, building, so we need to move to different uh, space that make uh, that uh, which audience can come and see and look at. So it means that uh, which uh, all all perspective is the co uh, which community we should work with. So we always thinking about the target audience. And some is young audience, some uh, oh, uh, uh, senior. senior. So we work with different aspects of audience. Yeah, oh. like uh, we uh, transform uh, the alley uh, mm. into uh, exhibition space where yeah. we uh, introduce a Roncon project the mm. group of uh, architect student. Uh, they are learning about the old cinema in the city mm. and they use those inmates that they do the research and uh, uh, hang uh, on the wall of the alley so people at the community can feel like oh uh, they are uh, reaching mm. or uh, uh, get the atmosphere that like a gallery it's not very clean like a white walk but uh, they learn and know from the projects or uh, a school, uh, mm -hmm. Hiroshima school, a uh, Japanese mm -hmm. uh, spot inside inside the pagoda. So uh, we do the install with uh, with all to turn and photograph uh, inside the building. Not only the student who study they learn about it, but it's a, a significant and uh, interesting building uh, with an architect but also mm. inside the pagoda lot, uh, uh, area so this kind of uh, space and location that we select uh, we kind to think of uh, uh, using uh, the best of its space mm. for everyone yeah yeah thank you so i think as i hear so all I so as I kind of hear all of you share, um, you know, there are a lot of things to, to balance. Um, you know, space could be one of those resources. Um, but yet at the same time, you know, you're kind of like almost like at the nexus, right, of, um, you know, um, engendering these sort of conversations, um, you know, developing these sort of collaborations and finding the people to work with, you know, the communities that you want to engage with. There's quite a lot, you know, that, you know, that you need to kind of manage. But yet at the same time, you know, these projects, because they come out of that place of, of, uh, of relationship, of respect, you know, and of friendship, um, it makes these projects, um, to me, like there's they're such wealth of experience and and they're so meaningful as well. Um, I've got just one more question that I just want to open up. Um, I think you all might have shared a bit about it earlier on, but I guess kind of looking forward, um, where do you see that you know you want to take, you know, Sasa Art Projects or Supernormal Space or Moving Picture Experiment Group forward? Like, what are you looking forward to next? Um, are there any sort of um, collaborations or, or projects, you know, that um, you would like to share with us? Um, anyone could start the ball rolling. Yeah. Trailers and teasers. We actually don't have any. Um, I, I guess I can talk about more more about where we hope to to go next. So I, I mentioned earlier that. Um, my wish or goal for the next two years is for more collaborations to take place. And also, I think we are really hoping to build a community um, to exist as a site of learning, more than just being a platform for 
uh, exposure and for you know exhibitions, um, because I realized that mm, there is there is a limitation to um, how and where people can learn um, when it comes to engaging with um, experimental practices. There's only so much schools can offer. And I know that because I teach extensively in schools, um, there, there are certain modules that are very limited. And so one of the wishes that we, we want to see happen is to um, exist as a place where these people who might or might not be artists, to be able to come and join a community where they can learn from each other. And of course, having kind of structured lessons or, or courses as well. So we are looking to models like, um, like the Rhizome in the New York, uh, like School of po Poetic Computations, also in New York, or School of Machine Learning in Berlin. Um, so right now we are exploring two things, I guess. One, which is a, a, an alternative sustainable financial model as well as uh, building communities that will feed into future developments of the media arts scene in Singapore. Yeah. And, and financial, the financial part especially is really important, right? Because you guys asked me how I pay for that space and it's a sad story because I'm just paying for that myself now. So anyone who wants to donate, please, you know where to find me. <laughs> but yeah. Um, and I think it's all, it's a big thing in Singapore because we tend to depend a lot on funds and grants, which you think. <laughs> but nonetheless, we still go for it because we believe in in making these things happen, right? But that's not to say that we don't need any help. We can do a lot more with more revenues. But I think we have to learn to make that happen as well, and not just depend on someone else. Um, but in a way that doesn't, you know, steer us away from what we do fundamentally. Yeah. So, so that, that is one of the biggest um, challenge for us in the next two years. Yeah. Uh, do you, do you want to go okay. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> thanks. It's a... Uh... Apart from the very lovely project, which is still under wrap, that um, the very lovely Xiaohui and the visual arts team and SMA are doing with us, um, I think it would be fallacious to not claim any sort of artistic ambition, but I think it might also be presumptuous to just list out, or rather to have a wish list of things that we want to do, aim to do, etc. So I'm going to go with a more general and, hopeful, and, and hopefully hopeful answer as well, in that um, MPEX, Place on Dead, is, is organic that way. It came, out, it came about because of shared interest, because of mutual um, senses of what we want to do together and what we can do together. And I think that the really big picture, long durée view of where to go for MPEX is really to be able to seed discourses um, to really to facilitate the kind of polyphony that we want to see proliferating and in a way querying the conversations that already exist with regards to ideas of disciplinary boundaries, with regards to ideas of what is experimental and um, experimenting. And um, I think that um, a very important part of what we are doing and examining is really um, on the idea of, of ecology. And ecology, not just in the sense of different agents, for example, let's say different media-based um, art collectives um, across South Southeast Asia, Asia and the, and, and the world, but really to try to unpack the economies of the image that, that exist. So um, it's a conversation, for example, that I myself that rooted in my own personal interest that I've talked to Dave and Ada about kind of performing an archaeology of media collectives, not art collectives in particular because of the way that they also intersect with certain material phenomenon, for example, certain technologies, but also with specific capitals of 
you know, if you can only use a certain film stock to make uh, certain things, it creates its own niche ecosystem rooted around a fundamental commodity, right? And I think the same is, it's the same for any other case study that you want to subject that to. Yeah, from uh, Sosa Art Project, we, uh, you know, we still uh, plan with our program running as usual, uh, even though in a pandemic or we lack of fan mm. funding, but then we uh, also think of uh, a way to sustainable ourselves uh, through the program, through uh, our network. Uh, but one thing for sure, we, we wanted to uh, reach out uh, to uh, the young artist community in Cambodia uh, for mm. uh, their perspective learning, uh, mm. for what is uh, shareable, mm. and um, especially uh, our ex exhibition program where we, we would like to invite uh, them to showcase their works, uh, stuff like that, and seeing uh, the future, uh, uh, winning um, the next two or three year, we uh, year. Hmm? we still wanted to uh, see how our uh, uh, educational program uh, run and the alternative uh, program that we we find to fit with the current uh, 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 fine art school stuff like that. Um, mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> mm. No. <laughs> for right now, we're looking for another, like uh, uh, the way that we now is uh, this year we have uh, a few project that uh, we planning and work on and 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 funding is also important for us. So and the uh, collaborative is. Uh, as you know that uh, sometimes it's coming up quick, sometimes it's not, and but the funding is is hard. It's it's hard for uh, 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 and well, for hunting <laughs> that space like us, and 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 we need to challenge ourselves. Uh, we not not don't want to look as a commercial. Uh, at the, so we but we ask the artist to uh, uh, to yeah mm. but also uh, you see uh, uh, we we wanted to like just this time or the last year mm. on our research on the art community mm. uh, in Cambodia uh, what can we we do more mm -hmm. uh, in this uh, society mm. uh, that's our one uh, perspective that mm. we wanted to uh, focus on mm. uh, in the next when, two years. Yeah, in next two years, we want the art community is grow, artists is growing mm. as well. So, and uh, we we wish that to have another art collective growing as well. Mm. So we hope we hope uh, uh, to have a strong art community in Cambodia, stronger. We be yeah. we be mm. very. Busy with the document staff. <laughs> <laughs> Plus that. Yes. <laughs> right. Thank yes, you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Vyasna. Thank you, Lena. Thank you, Camping. Thank you, Afons, for sharing so generously and giving us a lot more insight you know, into what your respective entities are doing. And I hope that gives some glimpses, you know, into how collaborative activity and work, you know, can really make such positive impact, you know, on, on the artistic scene, you know, whether in Singapore, in Cambodia and beyond. I, I think I just want to borrow what Alphonse said earlier, you know, about how it's a verb, you know, there is that doing, you know, that, that continuing to, to kind of work on something, on starting that conversation, on building that relationship, and I really like that. Yeah, so we've come to the end of this conversation. We hope that you all enjoyed it. Um, I'm just going to do a small little plug. Um, we are currently working, the visual arts team at Esplanade is currently working, you know, with everyone here on projects. And, um, you know, during 2022, you know, you can come by the centre and catch the exhibitions. But I think more importantly, um, it is also to be part of that broader conversation that we're hoping to have. 
So here's all of us signing off. Thank you so much once again for your time. We hope you enjoyed this. Bye-bye. Thank you everyone for spending the time with us today and thank you to the moderator and panelists for the conversation. If you would like to find out more about the talks happening for Saw Dialogues 2022, please visit artandmarket.net. Saw Dialogues 2022 is presented by Art and Market in partnership with National Arts Council Singapore. See you at the next talk. Cut.